How are you? It's so good to be with you guys today. It's so good to have you here. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule. And I know that you've been ministering a lot lately, um, you know, virtually. And I know that you've had a pretty busy schedule. How have you been holding up through all of these changes in this kind of quarantine environment? You know, I think probably like all of us, um, it's just literally leaning on the grace supply that's there for you every day. Mm -hmm. Um, Every day, even though we're in quarantine, you know, new days present new challenges. And so I have found that even though maybe, you know, we're not out and about like we typically are, each day almost has its own landscape mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And so for me and even my team, you know, pivoting and doing so much online as you all have been doing, it's really been going, okay, God, you know what I need today. And just grabbing on to that daily 
that daily load of benefits that Psalms talks about. So he's been faithful to do that. I know he's been there for all of us and it's just really such an honor. And I think such a pivotal time uh, to be connected with you all. I'm just so thrilled to be connected today. Oh, thank you so much. We are just so excited about the word that's on your heart. I know that mm. when you come, you bring a word that always has a prophetic edge to it. And my ears are wide open. And I'm always listening for what God's saying. So I'm super excited to hear what what's on your heart this morning. And um, thank you so much again for joining us. And um, so, yeah, you can take it away. Thank you so much, Pastor Eve. Well, church, I want us just to open up in prayer uh, and ask the Lord to really anoint our ears for what he has to say to us today. And I believe in an anointing to hear. I believe there's an anointing when God wants us to say something on his behalf, but there's also an anointing to be able to hear. The Bible talks about having eyes to see and ears to hear. And there's such an anointing for that, especially on us as the body of Christ right now, as we are looking and listening for where God is saying to us, essentially, this is the way, walk ye in it. So I want us to just gather and pray and ask the Lord to anoint us, to hear what he has to say to us. And I know he's going to custom tailor his word today to minister to your heart. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to gather in your name and even in your midst. God, we have been discovering in a new way that there is no boundary of time or distance to your kingdom and to the things of the spirit. And we thank you, Father, that in this day of great change, you stand above the noise and you are calling out, Father, with a loud voice saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. Lord, we ask you for an anointing this morning to be able to hear your voice in the change. Lord, you know what that needs to be for each one of our lives. Only you could speak a word in due season to every single one of our hearts today. But God, that's exactly what we're expecting you to do. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would think through my thoughts and speak through my mouth right now. We thank you for the anointing on your word that transcends, Father, even through a streaming service and builds and equips and changes our hearts. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in once again and to invade the privacy of our heart. And we ask you, Father, if necessary, we give you permission to rearrange the landscape of our lives to put us in position for all that you have for this time that we are right now in. And we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen, amen. Well, I wanna just open up and share a word with you out of the book of Isaiah. The Lord actually uh, did, as Pastor Eve mentioned, he dropped a word in my spirit. Um, this started germinating. Uh, leading up to this meeting and really took on some uh, some new shape even early this morning as I got up just to spend time with him and prepare to be with you all. And I want you to know that uh, it's very special to me to have this time with you all as a church and as a church network. Uh, I believe the Lord connected our hearts. Uh, I believe it was last year. The frame of time has totally gone out the window in this quarantine. Uh, but I think it, it was last year when I was there. And, uh, and there was just a knitting of hearts. Sometimes I have the opportunity to go to a place. I'm thankful for everywhere the Lord sends me. But there are times where you come somewhere for the first time. And there is the only thing I can describe it as is sort of a knitting. And it turned out that the time that the Lord had me there was sort of a significant time for you as a church, the church body, and sort of taking a shift and a change. The Lord had dropped some things in my heart in that time, but one of the things that he dropped significantly in my heart about this connection is that the Lord had connected me 
with you all as an ally. And that is an important word to me. An ally has significance to it. It brings an incredible amount of meaning. And I have spent time with your pastors, your senior pastors, Apostle Chris and Margie, and we have discussed the nature of that connection. I say that only to say that that has high value and significance to me. I take it very seriously. So when this opportunity came, especially in an unprecedented time that we're all living in, this worldwide pandemic, Uh, I look at this moment as a moment that means much to heaven, and so it means much to me. I want to share with you a verse out of Isaiah. It's found in chapter 48, and it's in verse 17. I'm going to read this out of the King James Version, and I believe this sets precedence for what the Spirit of God is saying to us and to you as a church body today. And I'm going to open up sharing some specific things God dropped in my heart for you as a church family, and then get into this word that I believe speaks to what God's doing with us as the body of Christ. Isaiah 48, 17 simply says this, I am the Lord, your God, that teaches you to profit. Who doesn't like that word? That leads you in the way that you should go. I'm going to read that to you again. I am the Lord, your God, that teaches teaches you to profit, that leads you in the way that you should go. Now, there's so much meaning that is wrapped up in this. First of all, God's saying, I'm going to teach you to profit. What is he talking about? He's saying, I'm going to teach you, even in a quarantine, lockdown, shutdown, pandemic moment, I'm going to teach you to profit. In other words, I'm going to teach you to profit in your relationships. Where other families are struggling and pulling apart at the seams, I'm going to teach you actually how to profit and increase in your relationships. I'm going to teach you how to profit emotionally and mentally. Things that were like cycles in your life that would trip you up. You take two steps forward and get pulled three steps back. I'm going to teach you, even in this moment, how to profit, how to increase if you'll listen to my voice. I believe that speaking to us uh, in, in our ministries that God's called us to do, when it looks like things are shut down, no, if you'll listen to my voice, church, I'm showing you how to profit, how to increase and, and expand in your influence. Even in a pandemic moment, I'm teaching you to profit. Even in our vocations, what we do vocationally, in our callings, God is saying, no matter what area your vocation is attached to, if you'll watch me for the cues, I'm going to teach you to profit, to have success. So he's speaking to this profiting, this success in every area of our life. He said, I'm going to teach you how to profit, how to have success in your marriage. If you'll listen to my voice. I'm going to teach you how to profit and have success as a mother, as a father in this. Yeah, there might be pull your hair out moments, but if you'll step back, take a deep breath and listen to my spirit, I'm going to teach you how to profit. I believe God is speaking that to us right now. And the the key to this, and I want you to hear this this morning, the key to this is that your spiritual senses are going to be your soul singular source for this. Your spiritual senses. What does this mean? It means that you and I are going to have to clear out some landscape in our lives. We're going to have to create some real estate in our day-to-day life where God is able to inform our spiritual senses and we're tapped in to hearing those spiritual senses. We're not letting just what's coming at us naturally pull us from place to place. If God is saying, I'm going to teach you how to profit, I'm going to teach you how to be a success, then the key to that is he's going to do it by informing our spiritual senses. And he's going to have to have our attention to inform our spiritual senses. But look at the last part of this verse. He says, and I'm going to lead you in the way that you should go. All right, church, I want to hear I want you to hear me say some things about this. When God says, I'm going to lead you in the way that you should go, I'm going to teach you to profit. The actual Hebrew translation of that is actually a word picture. 
And the word picture it paints is an archer actually taking you as an arrow and stringing a bow. This is what God is saying. Even in this moment where things are are shut down, where there's so much uncertainty, so much in change, at this stage, as you and I are gathering here today, we're looking for, are we opening? What's opening? How are things opening? As a church body, we're going, are we gathering? How will we gather? When will we gather? God is saying, "I, I know there's a lot of noise, but if you'll rise above the noise, you'll hear my voice above the crowd. And you'll see that I am stringing you as an arrow in my bow. And if you will be pliable, if you will be moldable, I will be able to string you like a bow and I will release you to hit a mark that no one ever thought you could reach. I will give you an influence no one ever thought you could have. And and hear this, I will expand your influence right now. If you'll let me string you like a bow, I'm going to teach you to have success in what I've called you to do. This reminds me of a prophetic picture. Uh, I believe it was a prophetic picture that the Lord just dropped in my heart as, as I was praying. And what I saw was simply just this image of this wide door uh, that I was standing in front of. And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, so many coming into this quarantine time felt stalled and stuck in the plan of God for their life. It was like, God, I've taken every step I can take. I've taken every inch, every every nudging that I've had, I followed through with it. And I just feel like there's no more room for me to step. There's nothing else I can do. I feel like I'm standing up against a door, but the door is simply not opening. And then this pandemic hit. I believe that God is saying in this, Listen to my cues because I am stringing you like an archer. You are like an arrow and you are an, an, an arrow in my, in my bow. And I'm going to release you and I'm going to open that door you've been waiting for to open. And I'm going to give you success. Now, here's what I wanted to share with you. The Lord dropped three specific things in my heart early this morning. And he said, I want you to tell them to watch specifically for these three things to take shape in your life in the days ahead. Now, I believe this is a word for you as a church. I believe it's for your church leadership. I believe it's for you as a church body. But I also believe it's for those that are connected to this network of churches and ministries, friends of this ministries. What does that mean? If you are watching this live stream today, God got you where you need to be. And this word is for you. So I want you to listen to these things that the Lord dropped in my heart. Number one, he said, watch for this. Precision is imperative in the days ahead. Precision is imperative in the days ahead. I'm going to share something with you. Sometimes as Christ followers, those of us that are believers, the Lord will will give us an inkling of something. He'll speak something to our heart. Maybe some of you are more picture oriented, you're seers. God will give you a flash of something. God will speak something to your heart, whatever that is. And immediately our humanity, our tendency is to immediately find definition for what God means by that. So we can attach understanding to it and go, okay, I know what that means and put it in that box. And that's just our, our humanity. When we get take in new information, or in this case, this would be revelation from heaven, our mind is going, I need to understand that. What does that mean? But I want to encourage you with something that I believe God is saying to us in this word, precision in the days ahead is imperative. I want to invite you to begin to create room to live with the mystery for a little while of what God speaks to your heart and what he's giving you vision for. Because if we will kick back and receive what God is saying to us, but not be so quick to attach our definition to it. You see, sometimes I think we do that. God says something to our heart and we go, oh, that must be mean this. And so we put it in a box and we're satisfied because we've put definition to it. But God up in heaven is kicking back going, that's actually not 
what I meant by that. And so now we're looking for God to do something and it's not transpiring and, and heaven's going, it's because the definition you put to that was not, was not my definition. So I want to invite you when he's saying precision is imperative in the days of head, let God speak some things to your heart. Let him show you vision for some things and learn to, to live in the mystery of it for a while. In other words, receive it, but let it germinate in your heart. Because what God is saying is if you'll do that church, there's a higher definition that God is wanting to bring to you, but it might not come immediately when he speaks that word to your heart or immediately on the heels of the picture he shows you. Let it germinate. Learn to live with the mystery and say, God, peel back the layers for me of what you're saying. And if we'll do this, we will have precision. As as that arrow that he's stringing his bow with, we will hit the mark. We won't hit a lower version of what God is saying to us. Why? Because we didn't go quick to put our definition on it. And hey, let's be honest. We can come up with some definitions and understanding of what God's saying to us that sound entirely spiritual. I mean, we, we really can. They can be spiritual, but it can be lower than what God intended to get across to us. So learn to live with the definition. Number two, this is what I believe God is saying to you, church. There are key situations that are about to turn around. Now, I don't understand entirely what that means, but I know that the Lord dropped that in my heart and said, you've got to declare this to them and for them this morning. There are key situations that are turning around. Some of you have been told that that's the final word on a situation. And I believe the spirit of God is saying, no, it's not. No, it's not. Hold your place. Hold your place of faith. Hold your place and allow me to work on this thing. If you'll trust me to do it, there are key situations. Now, when God says key situations, what that tells me is you don't have to stop and go, wow, I wonder what that could mean. Because when you've got a key situation in your life, it is on the forefront of your thoughts. It's on the forefront of your mind. So when I say to you, there are key situations, God's turning around. If there is something that jumps to the front in your heart, that word is for you. I believe this is true even in our cities right now. Even in our cities, maybe there's a a political, you know, stronghold that's a tug of war that's going back and forth and they're telling you this and they're saying this. Listen, we serve a God that stands above, that transcends situations going on in the earth right now. We can put that in the hands of God and say, no, God, these key situations you are turning them around. Maybe they're saying the numbers of those that are being infected with this virus are going up. God, we give that to you this morning. And we say in Jesus name, this key situation is turning around. God, do the supernatural, do what we cannot do on our behalf. Do it for us, Father. And we speak healing to those key situations that there'll be a turnaround. And I'll just tell you, maybe some of you that are watching, you have relatives or family members that have been tested positive. Maybe they're still in hospitals. Maybe they're recovering. I had a a dear pastor friend in Canada that was diagnosed and she was above the age that put her at high risk. She was diagnosed with the virus. They hospitalized her. Her organs began to shut down swiftly. Her breathing started shutting down. She was quarantined. Her own family can't even get to her. The doctors called them and said, look, we're probably going to be calling you on FaceTime soon for you to say your goodbyes. Uh, There's so many that are facing this. And of course, as a family of God, as a church body, they began to pray. They contacted those of us that were friends with the ministry. People began to gather and pray. This was a, you talk about a key situation. I want to tell you what, on the very day that they said, this is the beginning of her demise that key situation had a turnaround. I want you to know that that woman was released and she is home in her house praising God this morning. She had a full recovery. We have been just shouting praises over this 
It's just been so awesome. Only God could have done it. So I declare this to you. And some of you need to take hold of this for those that you know that are in dire health situations. Those key situations, we say in Jesus name, God, this is why we serve a supernatural God. Turn around in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for it. Number three, this is the third thing that God spoke to me. Opportune assignments. Now, this is really important. Opportune assignments will come to you now. They will come to you in the form of an opening and uh, an opportunity. They will come to you in the form of an opportunity. And when you check your heart about it, you'll know this is not just an opportunity. This is an assignment from the Lord. And these new opportunities are going to be openings to key territories. Now, this is really strategic, and I believe it's incredibly important because I know that this ministry that I'm speaking to today is an apostolic ministry. And part of the function of the apostolic ministry is to take new territory. Now, I don't begin to put my interpretation on what that means, but I will declare this to you again. There are opportunities that are going to come to you now. They're going to come to you in the form of an opportunity. And when you check your heart, you're going to know this is not just an opportunity. This is an assignment from the Lord. And it's going to open up new key territories. I know this church. I know that changes are still to come and more changes are going to be. I know that when we emerge on the other side of this, and I believe we're emerging right now, that we will be able to see that there has been much that has been lost. There's just no getting around that. We'll also be able to see that there is some that has remained. But there is a new change that is coming. And it's coming to us as leaders. It's coming to us as the body of Christ and is going to flow out of us to the world. I believe there's something that we need to watch for in this change. And it's something that God spoke to my heart. I actually wrote a bit about it in my book calling called The Changing of the Guard. And I want to read to you just a portion of this as I begin to close today, this changing of the guard stems from a verse that we find in Romans chapter eight in verse 19. It says for all creation gazing ease eagerly as if with outstretched neck is waiting and longing to see the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. I love the picture that the scripture evokes because it's confirming what we already know. And that is that there is a leadership vacuum in the world right now. People are coming out of this pandemic going, does anyone really know the way forward? Does anyone have answers? And they are looking for influence. I believe that the changing of the guard is something that God is speaking to us. And I I had God drop this in my spirit when I came across an old song that was written years ago by an artist out of the 60s by the name of Bob Dylan. And in the lyrics of this song, there was almost this prophetic, almost a a haunting call to it. And I want to read to you the lyrics of this song that Bob Dylan wrote. I believe in it, you can hear the call that's coming out of the world right now, even the younger generation saying, will you lead us forward? This is what he wrote. He said, gentlemen, gentlemen, he said, I don't need your organization. I've shined your shoes. I've moved your mountains and I've marked your cards. But Eden is burning, either getting ready for elimination or else your hearts must have the courage for the changing of the guard. I wrote in this chapter, when I first read these lyrics, my eyes filled with tears. To be honest with you, I feel emotional reading it now because I hear in them the brokenness of a generation where the enemy has perpetuated a gap 
and created a group of the disenfranchised. But it is also a call for the restoration of fathers to the son in these words. Your hearts must have courage for the changing of the guards. In these words, I hear the cry of a young man saying, fight for us. Fathers, mothers and fathers in the faith, would you fight for us? Would you please do what is needed and come get us? I want to just say to you that this changing of the guard that I'm referencing, that I believe the world is calling out for, is not a replacement agenda. It is not a generational exchange program. Now, I want to say that to you again. What is the changing of the guard? It's not out with the old, in with the new. It's not a generational exchange program. Sometimes we talk about the generation that's coming up behind us. I got to tell you, I don't really see it that way. I don't see a generation coming up behind me. I see us standing shoulder to shoulder, each generation standing shoulder to shoulder, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters standing together saying, this is our moment. We are called to lead. And the changing of the guard is not about the older or the younger. The changing of the guard, those that are going to step up and lead in this time has nothing to do with your age. It has everything to do with those that will have a right, uh, a new way of thinking and a right spirit within them. Those that will have the Lord able to manage and change and mold them and put a new way of thinking in them to see how he's innovating and leading us in the change. And those that will have a right spirit in them that say, God, whatever you're doing in this moment, you can do it through me. That's the changing of the guard that I see. Those that dig their heels in right now that say, you know, I just, I just want it to go back to normal. I just, I just wish everything would go back to the way it was. And to be honest with you, in week one or two of this quarantine, I'm pretty sure that I felt the same way. I'm just ready. I'm ready for life to go back to normal. But can I ask you a question this morning? If you really check the deeper reservoirs of your heart, would you really say that you want everything to go back exactly the way it was? Were we really functioning at our highest potential in God before this hit? Let me ask you this question. Can we really say that we had all of God that we could possibly have in everything that we did? Or can we not stop and admit that no matter if we've been walking with God for three years or 30 years, that we all recognized that we needed a bit of an awakening, that we needed to stop in our activity and come alive to his presence, that the changing of the guard really did apply to us because we needed a new way of thinking and a new spirit put on the inside of us. So that when we do come to gather in our buildings and in our homes again, that the presence and the person of Jesus is the point. And when the presence of Jesus is the point, there's so much that just doesn't matter anymore. There's so much that all of a sudden just simply doesn't become necessary because he is everything. I want to close with one last verse in Isaiah 48. And it's found in chapter, or I'm sorry, in verse 12. And I feel a calling from the Spirit of God to us to begin to do this as believers as we emerge from this shutdown quarantine time. It simply says this, Isaiah 48 in verse 12. Hearken unto me, O Jacob in Israel, my called ones, for I am he. One translation says, for I am that I am. Those are ancient words when God calls himself that. And he said, and I am the first and I am the last. 
This is what I believe the Spirit of God is calling us to. I believe that Jesus is wanting to be the first and the last, quite literally, in our lives again. And I want to challenge you with this. What about if every day from this Sunday forward, that he was the first of our moments when we wake up and he got to be the last of our waking moments before we lay down? What if the Alpha and Omega got to be Alpha and Omega in our everyday life? There's something coming out of the heart of heaven this morning that's asking to be the bookends of our existence. We know that the Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. And we say that, but what if we started living that in such a critical way that he literally got our our opening moments and our ending moments of every day of our life? If our spiritual senses are going to be our sole singular way forward, for him stringing us as that arrow in his bow, then I believe there is a God-given strategy that he's giving to us, saying rather than FaceTime and checking Instagram, getting your last moments of the day, would you give them to me? Rather than your opening moments being grabbing your phone to see what's demanding your attention, would you just pause and push that back and create new real estate that's just for you and I. Because I am teaching you to profit in this, and I'm leading you somewhere that you should go. That speaks of destiny. It speaks of calling. Rather than waiting to be told what all these changes are going to be by forces that feel more formidable than you and me, What if we hear from heaven and rise up and lead in the change? What if you and I as born again believers stand up on the other side of this and say, I know the way forward. Stick with me. We're going to draw people to the wonderful person of Jesus that we were never able to reach before. Church, I pray that this moment is not just a moment where we emerge out of having to stay home but it is a moment where we emerge with the presence and the power of the person of Jesus Christ upon us like never before. That the new place of an altar that we've built for him in our homes literally affects us as we come out of our homes and goes everywhere we go. I want to pray for you right now as we close. And as we do, these are not just words to close a sermon. But I believe that there is an impartation of the manifest presence of the Son of God, Jesus, our champion, that will come upon you in this moment and that will find residence in your homes in a greater way than you've known him before. Would you just join with me and let's pray. Father, I thank you for this pivotal moment of change. God, as it has been said so many times before, God, maybe we did not see this world pandemic moment coming, but God, you did. And you have been working on our behalf. You have been strong on our behalf. But God, even in this moment, Lord, you have been working and doing things in us so that you could do new things through us. Jesus, maybe once again, you have found a place real estate in our daily lives, in our thinking, in our marriages, in our families, in our homes, that God, maybe we have not made available to you before. But Father, right now, to every person that's watching this, either live or on demand, I release the presence and the person of Jesus to come upon you right now, to invade the space wherever you're watching, to take up the atmosphere where you are, that the Prince of peace so powerfully rest upon you that your mind that's been racing at night finally finds a quiet, still space. And Father, I pray 
that the Holy Spirit would breathe waves of fresh vision upon us now. And it's not a vision that we have to create or produce on our own. It's a vision, Holy Spirit, that is released out of the time capsules of heaven, things that have been prepared for us before we ever took our first breath. Father, we say to you this morning that we become that moldable, pliable arrow in your bow. And we say, God, string us in your bow. Teach us to profit, God, and lead us in the way that we should go. Father, I speak to all these opportunities, opportune moments that are coming to us, that when we check our hearts, we will discover our key assignments from heaven. And we say, Father, that no force from it, the enemy, from the kingdom of darkness, will be able to deter or delay these kingdom assignments. Father, that we'll know them when they come to us. And there will be great grace to do what looks insurmountable and to step into what looks impossible. But your grace will meet us there, Father, and propel us into a place that no one ever thought we could reach. And we give you all the glory for it, God, because it's yours. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it so. Amen and amen. God bless you, church. Amen. Wow. Thank you so much, Jen. That was, there's so many things that you just spoke to that it's going to take time to process them all. I'm going to listen to that multiple times, um, that message. Um, Last year when you came, it was last year, last February, that you had spoken about being an ally. And that just, um, that word, that ally, it's, it's such a, there's so much depth of meaning there, you know, because an ally comes alongside of you and it's not just a friend. Uh, an ally isn't just a yeah. friend. An ally is something, someone or a group of people that empowers you. They add their strength to yours. They come in yeah. with strength and suddenly you're, you're, you know, a, a stronger and more powerful um, nation or, you know, when we would use that term in regards to nations. And I thought how, perfect that word was to describe what you just did for us today. You came alongside as an ally and brought strength. And church, I just want to encourage you, go back and listen to those points that Jen made. She's she's She has a gift and she has a ministry and it's from heaven. And she's using that right now to equip us. She's using it to hear from God on our behalf. And she's giving us instruction from heaven to go out and implement and execute. And it's invaluable. It's incredible. And I think one thing that you touched on, Jen, that really struck me was that when you talk about people feeling stuck before this happened and how God Mm -hmm. was saying, listen to my cues, I'm the archer and you're the bow. And I think that is such an important thing for um, this generation of Americans, you know, in, in that mindset of who we are to remember is that we can get caught up in ambition and achievement. We can take the call of God and almost elevate it above the relationship and and create this um, pursuit of the call rather than a pursuit of God. And what you were touching on there was, you know, God isn't looking for you to ambitiously run after some um, success. He's looking for you to run after him, to tap into what he has yes. for you so that you can be pliable, so that you can accomplish the mission that he's called you to. And I think that's Such a good reminder for all of us to remember, I'm the bow, and as long as I'm there and cooperating with the Spirit of God and cooperating with His will, the things He's spoken to me are going to take place. So I'm like, I'm so blessed. I'm so encouraged, and I feel so empowered after that word. So thank you so much for joining us. What a blessing to have you with us. Um, Right now, I just, I'm going to take a love offering for Jen. We really want to bless her. We really want to pour back into her ministry in a tangible way. So I'd encourage you guys to click on the giving link again. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to um, choose the guest minister option in the drop down um, section and mark it Jen Tringale. And that ensures that every cent that you give right now goes straight to Jen and um, blesses her ministry. So we just want to be um, an ally to you as well at this time, Jen. So I encourage you guys to just give. Um, thank you again for joining us. Um, it's really amazing and incredible to have someone like you who we can turn to and receive from. We're so blessed to have you. And I just um, want to pray for you before we go. 
Father God, I just thank you um, for Jen, for her ministry, for her touch around the world. God, I just pray right now that you would increase her influence, that you would expand her territory, God. We know that you have a special anointing and a special calling on her life, God, and I and we know that she's moving in it. So God, I just thank you that wherever there is more territory to be taken, God, we just pray that those doors would be open, that, that more people would be able to be encouraged and receive from the beautiful gift that you've placed inside of her, God. And we just thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for the ability, even in the middle of a pandemic, even in the middle of the most unusual situations, we thank you for technology. We thank you for the ability to gather, even virtually, God. We thank you that we're safe in our homes, God. And we thank you for those that don't feel safe, that you would come in like a wave and just surround them with your love, Father God. We pray for every situation that's unseen, where there's need, God, that you would come and infiltrate that place and you would provide for that need, God. I thank you that people would know that they have a family, God, and that they would feel the love, Lord, and that they would be able to to reach out and to open up, God. And I thank you that as a family and as a community of believers, God, that there would be peace and prosperity among us even during this time. And we just bless you. Bless this day, Father, in your name. Amen. Amen.